Hey guys, what's up? It's your pal Dave from notesandvolts.com back in the lab for part five of the Teensy Synth tutorial. Today we're going to add some controls to the synth that will allow you to select different waveforms for the oscillators and we'll also add a detune function to oscillator 2. It's going to be fun! Alright, well since we've gone over creating pure data panels in the last few episodes, I'm not going to show you the full creation of this, but I'll show you what I did. In the oscillator section, I added these oscillator waveform selection controls. And this will allow me to change each oscillator from a sine to a triangle to a sawtooth and to a pulse. And uh, I've also added this detune control, which will allow us to change the tuning or lower the tuning of oscillator 2. And you'll find that really gives you a nice effect. So let's do an example to show you how that sounds. So first of all, as always, make sure your Teensy is plugged in and the code is loaded up and your MIDI controller is also connected as well. You go to media, select MIDI settings. Make sure that your MIDI controller is selected as the input device and your Teensy MIDI is the output device. If I play a note, you'll notice first that both oscillators are selected to sawtooth. So let's turn down oscillator 2 and we'll try the different waveforms. So we'll start with a sine. We'll go to a triangle, saw, and pulse. All right, and we can also do that with oscillator two. And remember, we can also change the octave of oscillator two. So let's bring both oscillators in. We'll select uh, saw for both of them. Now here's the real fun part. So I can detune oscillator 2 with this control. So when the control is all the way up, it's going to be no detuning. It'll be the actual pitch. And as I bring this down, Listen to how interesting it makes the waveform. I can go way down. That's a little insane, but could be a nice effect. And that just uh, makes the, the sound way more interesting. So let's do, uh, we'll drop oscillator 2 in an octave down. Oh yeah, that sounds good. sound like something and of course you can play with the uh, envelope settings as well if you want to slow fade in but there you go that's what we're going for okay so let's take a look at how I actually created these controls so if you remember from the last episode we looked at sub patches and if I just right click on it and open, I can get what's in inside this sub patch. And I've just added a fader, just like I did for these other ones. And if you notice, actually the zero point is at the top and the uh, full range, 127, is at the bottom. Because I wanted you to kind of pull it down to detune the note. And to do that, all you do is you 
set the lower level to 127 and the upper level to zero. So kind of the reverse of what we normally do. The oscillator select buttons are simply vertical radio buttons with four cells. And I just labeled it oscillator two, set the colors. And if you notice when I select them, the top button is actually outputting a zero. And once again, we're using our MIDI CC uh, controller out. And I set it to 109 in this case. Uh, the triangle is one, saw is two, and pulse is three. So basically I'm outputting the number zero to three with these buttons. And on controller 108, I have oscillator one. Uh, Detune is controller 110. So let's just close this. And there you go. Uh, once again, I'll put a link in the video description where you can download this panel, but pretty simple to make. Now let's take a look at the code that makes this work. Okay, so here's the code for this tutorial. Uh, Teensy Synth Part 5 Oscillator Select and Detune Task. You can download it in the link in the video description. Now, to get the Oscillator Select to work, all I had to do was go down to our Control Change function and add a new case. And if you remember, We're using oscillator one, we're using um, MIDI CC number 108, and for oscillator two, we're using MIDI CC number 109. So for MIDI CC 108, when that comes in, I'm taking the value parameter, which if you remember, can be zero to three. And if it's case zero, so if value is zero, then I'm gonna set the waveform using this command to waveform sine, which is our sine wave. If it's case one, setting it to triangle, case two, sawtooth, case three, pulse. And these are the official names you have to use for each of these types of waveforms. And same for case 109, which will be the oscillator two select, the value comes in, same for waveforms. All right, so now let's take a look at the detune controller. So this is a slider. It gives me a value of 0 to 127. And also remember, like I said, we've got the value of 0 at the top and 127 at the bottom because I want you to be able to pull it down to detune the note. It just kind of made more sense to me. This slider will send out its value as controller number 110. So when MIDI CC 110 comes in, it's going to trigger this piece of code, which is going to set this variable called detune factor. So the detune factor variable is a variable I created as a global variable up in our global variable list, and I originally set it to one. So let's look at how this detune factor works. The detune factor is a variable that's going to contain a percentage from 100% to 95%. All right, so that's gonna be the range I'm going to be able to detune the note. So if you think about it, if I multiply my, my note, my, the frequency of the note by 100%, I'm just gonna get the same frequency out. So say I take 440 Hertz, which is an A, and I multiply that by 100% or one, if I think about it as a decimal, I'll just get 440 out. Nothing will change. I'll just get the original note value. So that's no detune at all. On the other hand, if I have the control at the other end of the scale, maximum detune, which is 95%, I'll take my 440 hertz note, multiply it by 0 0.95, 
and that will give me 440 times 0.95 gives me 418 which as you can see would be a lower pitch note so to get this 95 to 100 percent value from my input which if you remember is a MIDI controller that goes from 0 to 127 I have to use this old familiar scaling function that we've used many times throughout these tutorials so hopefully you're familiar with it if not make sure you go back and watch the previous chapters of this video so basically how it works we've got our incoming value which can be 0 to 127 we're going to multiply that by our div 127 variable which if you remember turns it into a percentage from 0 to 100 percent I am then going to scale that by my maximum output range I want, which is 0.05. So this little piece of code will take my input 0 to 127 and scale it into a value of 0 to 0 0.05. But if you remember, I said I want my output to be 95 to 100%. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to take my 0 to 0 0.05 and I'm going to subtract that from 1 so that makes sense if I have a 0 I'm going to basically get 1 out if I have 0 0.05 I'm going to get 1 minus 0 0.05 equals 95 or sorry 0.95 which is 95%. So once again, our scaling equation does its job. Now, the good thing about using something like this detune factor, instead of calculating this every time, is I only need to calculate my detune factor amount when I move the slider. So the rest of the time, I'm just gonna multiply my oscillator frequency by the detune factor. I don't need to do this calculation until I reset it by moving the detune slider. So that's going to save me a lot of processing time. Now once I have this value calculated and and stored in the detune factor variable, I'm going to call this new function I've called offset. Now what this function does it basically sets waveform 2 frequency to the frequency selected by our MIDI key, just like we did before, which is found in our note frequency array. And then we're going to apply our octave offset like we did before. But here's where our detune factor comes in. So once I've got that frequency, I'm going to multiply it by my detune factor here and that's going to set the amount of detune that I'm going to hear. Now I've also done that in our main oscillator play function that we've been using and here it is here's our oscillator 2 frequency um, with the detune factor multiplied in. Now the reason I had to create this separate oscillator set function is I want to be able to call that every time you change the value of the detune slider. If I didn't do that, you wouldn't hear the new sound or the new detune level until you released and replayed the key, which is not what I want. I want you to be able to hear the amount of detune as you touch the control. So by calling offset as soon as this detune factor changes I'm going to reset the frequency of oscillator 2 and then you can actually hear in real time what it's doing which is exactly what you want so hopefully that makes sense nothing really too difficult about it all we're doing is we're multiplying our oscillator 2 frequency by 95 to 100 percent all right so once again once you've downloaded this program you want to upload it to your Teensy board, go to Tools, make sure the Teensy board is set to 3.2.
Make sure your USB type is MIDI. And then just click the upload button. And there you go. You should now have a detunable oscillator 2. Which is going to make your synth sound a lot cooler. Alright guys, that will do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. This synth is really coming along and starting to sound like something. So make sure you come back for part 6. Once again, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping to make this video possible, and I will see you next time. <laughs>